Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center with my good friend Seth V here for a new series we're calling Between Two Knives, where we're taking a look and checking in on our $50 EDC knife challenge. So let's get into it. So at the time we're filming this, we're each about halfway through this 30 day period where we're carrying a sub $50 knife. Seth over here has the K-Bar Dozier in D2 steel. Well, I've been carrying the Civivi Badlands Vagabond. And this was all started from a question in our Knife AQ series where someone literally asked this very question. If you had $50 to use one EDC knife for the rest of your life, what would it be? So these were the picks we made and we figured, you know what? Put, put our money where our mouth is and actually do it. At yeah. least for 30 days, not for life, but yeah, <laughs> you know, a, a year, month. a year would be a real commitment, but we're a kind month seemed doable, flaky. long enough to see if we'd really made a good or bad decision. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, how do you feel about it so far? It um, so far, so good. Um, we we kind of wanted to start by just talking about what it's been like carrying a few things. One, an inex a more inexpensive knife. Seth and I are uh, self-admitted uh, expensive knife buyers in general. More expensive than these anyway. Uh, and what it's been like to carry just one knife. Uh, for second of all, and then our knife in particular. Yeah. Um, as for me carrying uh, a less expensive knife, with my particular choice here, I have not felt lacking in any sort of way so far. It's done everything I need my, my EDC knives to do quite well. But in, in terms of carrying the one knife in particular, it's actually kind of liberating in a way because you, know, you don't have to make a choice in the morning of you know, which knife you're <laughs> going to take. You just grab your one knife yeah. uh, and, and take it with you. Uh, how about you so far? Yeah, I think I've I've shared a lot of the same experiences. Uh, it has been a little strange to to carry just one knife. Um, brings me back to really the, when I first started getting mm -hmm. into knives, and you know I only had one, maybe two. One knives or two, at first. yeah. And you're going to be carrying the best one you've got at the time because it's probably a step up from the knife before it, like a significant step up. Yeah, and uh, I think I had failed to realize how much I'd come to rely on kind of always having another knife at the ready <laughs> uh, because it, it pretty quickly it exposed the fact that like if you're carrying one knife you, to do everything mm -hmm. it's going to get a lot more use than if you're changing up day to day and it's going to need sharpening um, it's going to have to work with all the different pants you have like it it, <laughs> uh, it, it really is going to have to to be there every day with you. And I, I, it sounds obvious it is an everyday carry knife, uh, but when it's really just one knife, uh, it's different. It's yeah, different. and there, there's a bit of that back to basics nature to it yeah. by, by committing to carrying just the one knife. Yeah, for sure. So on that note, I, I take it it's worked with all your pants so far. <laughs> it has, the, the pocket clip, I think it's one of the hardest things of folding knife design. It has to do mm. so many things. Um, it has to be comfortable in hand. It has to go onto the pocket easily, but not come off so easily. Mm -hmm. uh, it needs to accommodate all sorts of different types of pants. Um, and not get in the way. Not And not get yeah, in the way. Above and, all of it. And this pocket clip, it, it's one of the greats. Like, it worked with everything. It was completely uh, thoughtless you know some pocket clips sometimes you have to use like two hands you got to hold the mm. pocket and then get the knife in this one is it, just working it's just working no no second thoughts needed and that is an accomplishment well i can see on the blade coating already that you know you've definitely been using it um tell us some of the things you you've been using it for so far like what, what have you got into with this blade well uh i didn't get into much outside of my usual day-to-day -day stuff, mm -hmm. uh, which includes you know, cardboard cutting, uh, which includes a little food prep. Uh, you know, if I'm in the kitchen and I want a little snack, I'm gonna go for my EDC knife first hmm. to cut up what I'm what I'm about to eat. Not a kitchen knife. No, I don't know. It's just easier if it's if it's kind of under a certain size. If I'm not like preparing a meal, eh, just use my pocket knife. You know, and um, uh, it's done great for that. Um, I went on a short little fishing trip with this knife. I actually did not use it to cut any <laughs> fish, but I did use it to open up my snacks that day. There you go. 
just basic EDC stuff, really. Yeah. And using it has been uh, has been a treat. Honestly, as plain as this knife is kind of to look at and to handle, in use it really sings. Like it's, mm -hmm. I, I love how lightweight it is. Um, it's just very effortless to manipulate, you know. Uh, I think the word that comes to mind for me is agility. There's an agile nature to it. I think you and I both really picked designs that have that quality to it. Yeah. It's, it's you, know, you said it sings in the hand, like mm -hmm. it, it just sits there and you can tell there's something to it, something to the feel in the hand where it's ready to go, it's ready to work. Yeah, we both kind of gravitated towards knives of the same size range, like they're mm -hmm. real, they've got parity, like they're, they're neck and neck in size. Very similar. And I think it's because a, a knife of this size just works on two different scales. It's mm -hmm. got a big enough handle to kind of be a harder use knife when you need it to be and really power through some cuts. But it's got a small enough blade that when you're going to be pinching it and you know coming up towards the tip, it's not going to feel like it's out there, uh, you know, kind of unbalanced sure. and, and, yeah. and away from you. Yeah, balance is such an important thing. Yeah, it's kind of been the same story for me in terms of of the uses, just kind of basic stuff, opening packages, mail. Um, haven't done any any real food prep with it personally, but. Just basic stuff and it's worked really well. Uh, we used both of these knives in the uh, Cardboard Slayers video uh, from last week. Um, we got to kind of compare the two there. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, the wear that uh, that your knife is taking is much more evident because of the uh, the painted coating there. I mean, you can see some, some scuffs coming up. This guy, I've, I may not have, you may have used yours a little bit more than mine, but the Civivi looks darn near close to original. I mean, I, I was inspecting it and there's a, like a tiny scratch back here at the top of the, the uh, hollow grind, but I can't really see anything else. There you go. Yeah. Right there. Like without, unless the light even catches it, it's, you don't even see it, which is pretty cool. And the, uh, the satin finish that they use here, there's a little bit of grain to it. So it might help hide scratches a little bit, not like a good stone wash will. Uh, but there's something I like about that from a longevity perspective. Oh yeah. Uh, it looks a little nicer, longer, I guess you could say. Um, one of the other liberating things, I mentioned that word earlier about carrying a knife, in this case, a $40 knife, is you're a little less worried about it. Mm -hmm. um, and that can work two ways. You're a little less worried about messing it up if you're, if you're doing something you maybe shouldn't be using a knife for. Uh, but I actually traveled with this knife uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, got on a plane and threw it into the, uh, not the carry-on, threw it into the checked bag. and. I didn't have to worry about it. Like if it was a Sebenza or something in there, you'd be like checking that pocket as soon as it got off the conveyor belt. But with this, it's less of an issue. It's one less thing to worry about. And yeah. when you're traveling, don't, you know, you don't want to worry about too yeah. much. That's for sure. That's nice. That's nice. Um, how's yours been breaking in? Cause I know that, uh, there's no washers or anything on this knife. No, it's just the blade and then the uh, FRN handles clamped around it. Uh, it's been good. It's, it has broken in quite a bit. It was a bit rough at first. Not rough, but tight. It was mm -hmm, tight at mm -hmm. first. Um, I just left the pivot the way it was. Um, I actually didn't touch anything until uh, the first sharpening. And then I gave it a nice cleaning and adjustment. Um, and since then, it's become much easier to you use. You get the pop going if you need to. That's yeah. cool. I can pop it open. Mm -hmm. I can close it one hand. Just kind of let it fall carefully. The unsharpened uh, mm -hmm, Lacasso mm -hmm. there the rest of the way. So you mentioned sharpening. How happy were you with the uh, the factory edge on that? The factory edge was okay. It was mm -hmm. symmetrical. It was sharp, but it was a little more ob obtuse than I'd like. Um, so I noticed about a week in that it was starting to hang up on cardboard. It wasn't, mm -hmm. um, it wasn't up to my uh, typical obsessive standards of sharpness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Normally what I would do is uh, pick up another knife, honestly. Right. I would just <laughs> be like, oh, it's a long time since I've carried my pair of three. That's still sharp. Yeah, yeah, carry let's that carry that one instead. Yeah, exactly. But no, you can't do that. Can't do nope, that. I had to go and sharpen it, um, which was good. I, it, it, I was really surprised at how long it had actually been since I'd done a proper resharpening like on a one re of my knives. Not just a resharpen, but a reprofile in this yes. case. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a little easier for me since I've got, you know, knife making equipment. I just take it to the belt <laughs> sander, but you had to do it by hand, didn't you? Yeah. How, how was the D2? Actually, it was fine. I, I, 
I think the D2 can be a challenge to sharpen if you are a little inexperienced or if you're using truly, truly entry-level equipment like a stone you got at a hardware store mm -hmm. or something. I don't have fancy equipment, but I have a couple uh, affordable water stones, Japanese water stones, and they, they did the trick. Um, the key is using a low enough grit. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you don't want to be, you want to go aggressive enough that you're not spending too much time doing it doing the actual reshaping. Reshape it rough and then just refine it out from there. Exactly, yeah. I don't want to make this a, a sharpening episode, but um, definitely if you're sharpening D2 at home and you're having trouble, go low grit. I started with a 220 stone and did not stop using the 220 stone until the entire apex had been reshaped mm -hmm, the way mm -hmm. I want it. And from there it was super easy. I, I uh, took it up one stone and then you went to a strop. And, and the edge itself looks really nice there. I mean, you got a little bit of reflectivity to it there. It's very good. It is very nice. It's very satisfying to have a shiny edge. <laughs> That's one thing I'll say where, you know, Civivi does such a good job with their edges straight out of the box. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it, it almost looks convex. I'm actually not sure if it is or not, but you've got a little bit of that shininess and it's nice and thin. Um, D2 obviously should have an edge that lasts longer than the 9CR here, uh, but I've not sharpened this knife at all. I've stropped it a few times using, you know, some, uh, some mm -hmm. black compound and then green. And, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll use it to the point where it's no longer shaving sharp. And then I just have to strop it and it, it's kept it right there. I mean, you can, you can feel the edge there. Don't try this at home. <laughs> oh yeah. All it has needed has been that being being a steel, unlike D2 that, that does, can take a little more effort to resharpen, combined with the fact that the edge itself is so thin, maintenance has been just an absolute breeze on this guy. So, you know, the, the lower edge retention compared to you know, powder metallurgy steels out there hasn't bothered me one bit. Yeah, well, you know, they say geometry cuts. Yes. So a thin edge, whatever the steel it's made out of, uh, is always gonna outperform a thick one when it comes to slicing tasks. Mm -hmm. At mm -hmm. least that first cut. <laughs> that stropping has uh, has polished the edge a little bit, but other than that, it it looks pretty much factory new. It does. It's holding up great. Um, you know, you mentioned yours having broken in a little bit. Um, I, I mentioned this a little bit to you before, but to share with the viewers there, I think at the end of the thirty days, yours is going to feel very different from from when when you picked it up day one. Yeah. I think this Civivi is going to feel exactly the same. Um, just you know, the way they tune them out of the box is is pretty spot on. Uh, the action is great. Um, it's real, it can be fidgety if you're, uh, you know, a little doing some like nervous knife flipping, that sort of thing. Uh -huh. um, it works, it works really well. Are there any times you wish you were carrying a different knife? Um, not so far, hmm, Okay. not so far, honestly. Um, maybe next week, uh, I'm going on a little bit of a, a vacation uh, actually, by the time you're watching this, I will be on vacation already. Um, we're going to uh, a wedding, and that's a time where I have fun, like picking out a you know the right gentleman's knife. Yeah. Um, and this is not quite a gentleman's knife. <laughs> uh, I think I'm going to wind up having to take my uh, my one of my fancy skipjacks with me, just to have. I won't use it. You know, I'm going to honor honor the uh, the challenge here. Um, <laughs> it but really will just be a dress knife. It, it'll be for show. Yeah. Lame, maybe, you know, you tell us. But, you know, especially for me, like, you know, I'll be around people that have never seen like my, any of my designs before. So I kind of like, I feel obligated to have something to show them. Yeah. Um, so I'll probably carry that, but not actually use it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, if they made a fancy version of this, it wouldn't be a terrible, terrible gents knife. No, no. Um, it's got the lines for it. You know, now that I have these, side by side, I'm really noticing how similar they actually are. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the, the on paper specs are different. They have different blade steel. They have uh, different lock types, you know, different hardware in the pivot. Um, one's got a deep carry pocket clip, uh, one doesn't. But the overall silhouette kind of... It's not all that not dissimilar. all that different. Yeah. I wonder if there's something about just kind of this dropped handle shape. Well, something I've always said with, with this style of handle and, and about the Dozier very specifically is that it's going to work with a lot of different hand sizes because of kind of the neutral shape. You know, they got the drop there. Mm -hmm. And especially on, on your Dozier, 
the way they the, they handle this portion right here where if you do have larger hands your pinky is just going to gently move off the back yeah so you know it's even if the handle it would be like technically too small for you it's never not actually going to feel too small because it's not pinching you off of the knife handle at all mm -hmm. it just works really well your hand just wraps around it and you get a little bit not quite as much with the uh the Civivi here by comparison but you know in isolation you get you get kind of the same thing going on there as well so all that being said like i said this is kind of just a check-in this is not the exhaustive review which you know we'll be able to uh, have out in a couple of weeks so far you still happy with the choice you made yeah absolutely absolutely I am as well. Big shocker. Big, tw <laughs> big twist ending. <laughs> you know what? I'm, I'm really happy that I saved some of my knife budget for a portable sharpening stone. Mm. Uh, even though I didn't use exactly that sharpening stone to sharpen <laughs> this, uh, being equipped to sharpen this really changed uh, how much I'm, en I'm enjoying carrying this. Right. Thing. If right. I didn't have a way to sharpen the knife after that first week, I would start to get frustrated with it. Right, right. Um, but because I did, I'm I'm loving it. It's cutting great. Very cool. Yeah. Well, on that bombshell, <laughs> it is time to end. Uh, if you want to get your hands on either of these knives or any of the other uh, variants in the series, we'll have links below. Keep sticking around for uh, probably another two weeks, I'd say for the, uh, the final wrap up for our, our 30 day experience with both of these knives. Let me know your $50 knives that you would choose for this particular assignment as well down below. Yeah. Make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program while you're over at the Knife Center. So if you put your money down on one of these knives, you'll at least earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson. I'm Seth V. From the Knife Center signing off. See you guys next time. Can I do the finger guns? If you want, go for it. <laughs>